Welcome back. Today is day four of the YZ125 build. Um, I, today I'll be doing the graphics and just buttoning up stuff here and there that I might have forgot or just things that I see as I go along. Um, obviously I still got a chain to do but that won't be until tomorrow. But I can't get started on it yet because I have to finish the job that I'm currently on which is a YZ450 2021. Um, he bent his radiator here and uh, it was nagging him because it was just a mild bend, but it was enough that this that this sh shroud right here would hit the front fender when you turn it. So he wanted me to straighten that out for him because it was just a mild bend. I, I was able to straighten that out. Got it pretty perfect, actually. She's nice and nice and straight now, and uh, doesn't rub anymore. And then we got a front wheel bearing out on it. He didn't even notice that. It was when he brought it here for me to do the radiator. I grabbed the front brake. And I was like, whoa! I think you got a wheel bearing out here. And, uh, and then while it's here, you can toss in a chain on it. His chain is pretty slacked out. It's getting pretty old. I'm going to be putting one of these. Put one of these EK gold race, not racing chain, but EK K gold roller or O-ring chain. I'm sorry. These are really cool chains because they have like little light uh, holes they drill in to make them a little bit lighter. Up in the middle here, you can't, there, there you can see it right there. You see that little hole in there? Right in there. To make them a little bit lighter. I don't know it's just a little bit, but the really good chains. If you if you want to run an O-ring chain, I won't be able to run that on the 125, unfortunately, because O-ring chains kind of do bog down 125s a little bit. So I'm just going to run a, a standard non O-ring chain. But uh, on a 450, O-ring chain is kind of the way to go because yeah, they already eat up their chains as it is. But anyway, before I get back on the 125, I have to finish this bike up for him. So let me finish that up. And we will get on that 125. Oh, by the way, I forgot to add one of the one of the uh, benefits of buying this chain is it's actually priced pretty well, pretty right. You can get them. I find them around for about 65 bucks. It's a great chain, um, in my opinion. You you got to pay closer to 100 bucks to get a chain typically of this quality. It's made in Japan. It's it's just a good chain. Got my breakfast over here. It's actually our wedding anniversary today, so uh, I have to get booking because I, I have stuff to do this evening. So let me get moving. I have to get this one done, move this one out of the way, and get on the 125 and get that finished up so I can go do the anniversary thing. Okay, done, <clears throat> done with the YZ450. Back on to the YZ125. We're going to get the graphics on here. From Decal Labs EU. Yes, sir. I got a little number plate for the window of your car. That's the front. The swing arm. Let me put the stuff I don't need over here. Air box. Another number plate. Front fender. Tank. Some more of these little stickers here. Number plate again. Swing arm. Check you out that. Radiator shroud. Air box. Tank, tank. Front number plate. Rear fender. Like I said, I emailed them and I just told I they have different brands on here. I chose to pick the brands of the stuff that I use, the stuff that I use on the bike. I do use some Yamaha Lube products. I'm currently running the Dunlop tire, so that's good. Got a Pro Circuit silencer on her. I do wear Oakley uh, goggles. I'm not running a Bell helmet right now. I'm running the, what do they call it, the D3 or D6. I don't know what the heck, I don't know, man. But I will be running a Bell helmet for my next helmet again. And then I use the Rental handlebar, so that's why I did that. These go on the front number, uh, Fender 2. Another one of these little decals, and here we go. Alright. Um, I'm not going to remove all the plastic to do it. I'll leave the tank on the bike. I'll get the number plates off. And I'll probably leave the fenders on and just apply the graphics while the fenders are still on the bike. But let me go get the seat off and the number plates off and the shrouds off. Let me start with that. Alright, got this, that stuff off. Um, a lot of these, pretty much every modern day motocross bike, the seat likes to wear into the aluminum on the subframe where the seat rests on it. 
on this bike it's these three points right here and they all, on this bike it can also wear into the uh, the tank area and what happens is after a while it digs in pretty deep and that's one of the reasons why when you sit on it a bike that has 100 or 150 hours on it versus you sit on a new bike a new bike seems like you sit taller and just more rigid feeling and the older bike you kind of sink into a little more that's one of the reasons why but to keep to prevent that from happening what i do is i take some shoe goo uh, this is black shoe goo you can buy the clear stuff at walmart in the shoe department next to their shoelaces stuff is awesome uh, if you need if you want the black stuff you can order that online um, I don't know why I have the black right now. I usually buy just the clear just because it's easy to find and I don't care what color it is You're not going to see it on here, but I'm gonna put some strips of that stuff right here this stuff is really strong and uh, it, it, It'll just keep it from wearing in and I'm also going to put some strips right here where that where the tank uh, seat rubs on the tank um, This stuff's also good For the bottom of your boots. That's where I first started using this um, you know, I'm an old skateboarder. When I was young, I skateboarded. I found this stuff to be really good if you're a skateboarder eating up your shoes. But on the boots on the bottom where you wear out on your foot, your foot pegs wear grooves into the uh, boot. If you want to slow that down, just put a nice thin layer of this wherever you are wearing out your boot on the bottom. It provides just as much traction. I mean, it's shoe goo. It's a rubbery stuff that dries up. It provides just as much traction and it's hard for your foot peg to pierce through it. So you'll still have good traction, but you won't be piercing through your boot soles and wearing out your boots prematurely. So, all right. All right, got that taken care of. If you are going to use this stuff on the bottom of your boots, by the way, you want to put it onto your boots three days before actually going out riding. On the package, it does say it takes 72 hours to fully cure and dry. And I would agree with that. I mean, you might be able to get away with two, just two days, but three days is best. Um, it looks like I put it a little bit thick as you can see you don't have to make it look pretty just stick it on where you see it, It's been wearing into it, but th when this stuff dries it thins out So it might look a little thick right now, but when it dries it's just gonna be a nice little rubbery Layer and um, you can always if you wear into it and you ever feel like you need to replace it Even like on the bottom of your boot you can pull it back off on the boot You got to use like a pair of needle nose and kind of grab it and roll it off almost like you're opening up a can of sardines and you can put a fresh layer on if you you know if you start eating into that layer and on this you just you grab it with a pair of needle nose same thing and kind of just peel it off once it's dry if you ever want to replace it or if you put it in the wrong place and you got to move it so while I'm here I think I'll go ahead and start with the tank graphics I gotta rip these graphics off my bro would cry if he saw me do this he loves his stock graphics but here we go All right, here you go. As you know, if you want to replace these stock graphics from Yamaha, they don't sell them for cheap. And I think the reason they don't sell them for cheap is, is to kind of detour you from trying to make your, uh, let's say your 2020 look like their new 2021. If you wanted to do that, they're gonna make you pay for it. But that one's off. And I'll just stick that right there. All right, let me go get the other side off and then we'll put the new graphics on I like to use brake cleaner actually let me spray it on this so I don't want any of that over spray probably shouldn't have got that on my hand but ugh. yeah brake cleaner really dries the surface off you can use rubbing alcohol too it doesn't dry it up as well but it still gets it done but if you got some brake cleaner that will take the gas cap off here You want to get it really dry, all the oil off of it, so the graphics can stick really good. There we go. Let's see. Try to get an idea where I need to send her. Okay. What I did is I just removed just the center, but I left the uh, the backing right here, so I don't have to worry about these two pieces flopping around and sticking this stuff as I get her on here. What I'm doing is I make sure that that corner right there is perfectly in its spot, and then I try to follow that line right here but I see it goes too high there so peel it back up 
I really have to kiss that bottom edge good it looks like so that the top edge doesn't go over that's looking like that's gonna be okay I, I try not to press them hard at first when I first start pressing it down because if I have to peel it back up like you just saw that I did it's not overly stuck on it's just kind of come right up and then I can reposition it That's just fingerprints right there. Dirty fingerprints. Start, start on the edge right here and then roll it over. Now let me do the top end. And just like everything else in this series, this is not really, really a tutorial on how to put graphics on, but I, I'll give you some of the things that I've, tips that I've learned throughout the years as I go along. One of the things I can tell you is they're not easy if you want to get them right. You want it to look decent. You have to take your time. I've done this quite a few times, so I have a little bit of experience doing it, so I might make it look a little bit easier than it really is. At least to make it look good. Like I said, anyone can just slap them on. But to make it look good, that's where it can start to become a little more difficult. Let me go ahead and grab the heat gun and get some heat on her. A blow dryer will work too. A hair blow dryer, if you don't have a heat gun, it doesn't work as good. You really got to sit there and work it. These heat guns are like they're like a blow dryer, a hair blow dryer times three or four. They get pretty hot. I almost forgot about these lips here. There we go. And then right up here, it's like lift up a little bit just from the curve it has to go through. That's where the heat goes good. You heat the graphic up and it makes it pliable and flexible. And you can flex it right into that groove. And hopefully it'll stay and stick. Okay. I'll go do the other side now. Okay, got that on. Um, I'm going to do something else here as well. If you look over here on this bike, you see how the graphic is just starting to peel out right there. They like to do that just from when you ride the bike, your legs, when you slide down right here, it eventually like starts to pull it out a little bit right here. Um, this side's looking better, but still does it a little bit. And that would be a lot worse. It probably would have pulled that completely out and be hanging out and people lose their tank graphics all the time because of that. But what I do to try to limit that is the same shoe goo I use right here. I'll put a thin layer all the way across this. Just a real thin layer. That stuff's strong. So it'll grip from the tank to the graphics here and kind of keep it from getting slid down. Just to give you an idea how well that works. There's almost 200 hours in that graphic kit. Now, granted, my, my wife's riding the bike, but still, it's almost 200 hours. There it is. Got a little thin strip right here. Thin strip right here. When it dries up, it does get thinner, like I mentioned earlier. But that'll keep the graphics from sliding off, so hopefully I can get 200 hours out of these graphics. Um, like I mentioned, you can get the stuff in clear if you're interested. I just so happen to have black. And you're not going to see it anyway once the seat's on. All that stuff will be hidden. Alright, time to rip these off. 
I don't think these have been there that long. They're coming off pretty easy. I've had it where you leave them on the bike for a good 150 hours, and boy, they're hard to get off. If they haven't been on there too long, they come off pretty easy. Yeah. All right, let me do that to the rest of the radiator shrouds and number plates. Just got to clean them up with a little bit of brake cleaner and start sticking the new graphics on. All right, I'll peel this out first, these holes. That'll help me line it up. Try to get it on as even as I can. Like I said, it's hard to get graphics perfect. But if you take your time, you can usually get them pretty good. Place it on ahead of time just to see how it fits when everything lines up. Okay, how am I going to start this one? I think I'm going to... I'm going to cut this one in, in half, more or less. I'm going to do it in sections. Because there's always a little bit of flex. And so if you do it in sections, you can kind of... If you got to stretch it to make it match the next section perfect, or even if you have to shrink it down a little bit with a little bit of heat from the heat gun, we have that capability. Also, one thing that helps too is to like take that and fold that up. It gives you something to grab on once you have a part of it down. Yeah, I can already tell that's at the wrong angle. Can't be scared to pull it back off if you have to here and there like I just did. Um, again, that's why I work in sections. That's why I am working in sections. And that's why I don't go pressing it on tight until I have most of it on and I'm good with what I see. So far, so good. Go ahead and work on the next section here. not going to press that in there yet that's I'm more worried about getting the alignment right right now then I'll go around and I'll and I'll uh, cinch it all in in the corners Right here is trying to wrinkle up on me, so I'm having to kind of press it on now to make sure we don't get any wrinkles. Wow, that came out really good so far. I mean, I met that corner perfectly. I'm looking for any major air bubbles only in the areas that I've already stuck on because if I had to peel it up to get that air bubble out, I could. I don't see any major air bubbles all right now I'll start rolling around on the sides um, let me see I guess I'll start here
Sometimes they don't stick right away as you roll it in. That's okay. That's what the heat gun's for. We'll get to that here shortly. This is tough because you can see you see how far it has to go in here and it's kind of it's rounded. So you're basically having to stretch it to get in there. So I'm gonna try to start start at the deepest pocket of it, roll that in, get that stretch out of the way. And then I can work the rest of it in. And even then, you see how it keeps lipping back up? But that's where the heat gun's going to come in in a second. That's going to lock that in. Got a little air bubble right here, but I'm not going to worry about it. Mod ones aren't bad. I've been able to use like a razor or a needle sometimes to kind of pop the graphic right there to get rid of the air bubble if it's big enough and I don't feel like peeling the graphic back off to get it right. I don't want to pop this one off to get that little air bubble out because I got it on there pretty good. The, the, the alignment's really well. I feel good about it. So I, I don't want to risk losing that perfect alignment that I seem to have right now. Air bubble right here just work it off the edge there we go oh, another one right here that's another thing too when you start hitting it with the heat gun it seems like that's when the, if, if, if you have air bubbles like I got one right here dang it I'm gonna peel this up and work that out if you have air bubbles um, that you really can't see yet seems to be once you get heat on it the heat makes the air expand that's when the air bubble seems to pop its head out and we have a couple here if I can work them to the edge. If you're close to the edge, you can walk them to the edge. There we go. We've got a big one. Right, right there. But it's close to the edge, so all I gotta do is just cinch it down and walk it to that edge. You'll hear it, listen. I don't know if you caught that on camera, I heard it when it comes out. Alright. Get that area pretty hot because I need it to stick real good here. I'm gonna take that part where it rolls where it came too far over right here. You can trim that with the razor. But what I like to do is I first like to try to just roll it over the edge if I can. That way I don't have to trim it with the razor. If, if it won't stay, then you have to trim it. But if it stays like that one seems to be doing, you can just leave it like that. Same thing here, roll it over the edge because it kind of went over just a little bit. Get it nice and hot to help it stick over the edge here. If I come back later and it's having a hard time hanging over, I can trim it with a razor. It's not the end of the world. looking pretty good a couple air mild air bubbles here and there but some of the milder air bubbles kind of pop, disappear on their own after a while so I don't worry about the real small ones of course I try to limit any air bubble I can but if they, 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 it just happens you can do the most perfect job or think it's perfect like I have one right here you can think it's perfect then you hit it with the heat gun and what happens air bubble pops up it's just how it is but give it time they, they, they kind of go away on their own usually some of the smaller ones will. All right, let's move on to the next. I got the other radiator shroud on. Just gotta do the whole heat gun thing now. That one came out equally as good as the other side. Maybe even a tick better.
even though I'm hitting it with a heat gun now, obviously I'll wake up tomorrow morning, come out here and see that there's another spot that started to lip up or whatever. Ooh, there's a nice big air bubble here, but it's on the edge. I can work it out. Like I said, once you start hitting heat, hitting it with heat, that seems to be when the air, some air bubbles will kind of stick their head out. The heat makes a little bit of air that's already trapped underneath there expand and it will show you where the air bubble is at. Work that one to the edge. There we go. When I was at Loretta Lens, I got to see, uh, I guess you can call it a Tomac replica bike underneath the Yamaha little race tent there. And one thing I noticed was the graphics that they use on his bike, they use a matte finish, not a shiny finish. I thought that was interesting. It's, it's, it's a shiny matte finish. It's matte, but it has a little bit of glaze to it. Pretty cool looking. I wonder what what the reason is. Maybe so they can just slap the graphics on and not have to worry about bubbles. I don't know, but it looked pretty cool. And this is the first time I ever think I've seen that done before. A little air bubble here. You can probably work that to the edge. Ooh, big air bubble right here. Walk that out. All right, she's pretty much done. This one should be pretty super easy. I'm just gonna follow mainly that, this edge right here. I'm gonna get it lined up the best I can to that edge and that circle, center that circle out right here, the best I can with that edge. Let me see, if I do that, let's see how everything else lines up. Yeah, that's how it's gonna be right there. So, all right. He wants to go over right there, so I'm going to have to pull this off and redo it. Air bubbles show up the most with black. So when you're putting black on, you want to do your best not to get air bubbles. Let's see, let's see. Perfect. Met that edge. Perfect. All right. I love it when that happens because you really don't know until you get there. It can change on you. You think you have it right and finally, oh, oh, got an air bubble over here. Like I said, black is, is one area that you have to be real careful with the air bubbles. Got another one, two of them, jeez. I'm not going to suffer you through all this plastic. I just wanted to hit at least one radiator shroud and one number plate for you guys to get an idea. Time to roll her over the edge now.
because I think I got it good. I don't see any more major air bubbles. Looking good. Alright, heat gun. Oh, 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 got an air bubble right underneath there. Let me see. Sometimes you can peel that back up. Oh, I might have to suffer with that air bubble. I, I really can't get that graph. Oh, wait, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Alright, got them out of there. Alright, heat gun time. Now, I probably should replace this number plate. I'm just now noticing it's a little crinkled up right here. Uh, too late now. Got a runner. Oh yeah, a little air bubble here. Walk that to the edge. Oh, she don't want to go. She sometimes they're really, really, really small. You can't really walk them. There it is. Oh man, it's got an air bubble right there. That's a bad place. Oh man. Alright, what I did is I waited for the, the it lift them back up like this when they're smoking hot still. See if I can get just enough to get that. Just enough room to be able to walk it out. Because when, when it's hot, you'll stretch it if you peel it back off when it's hot. So if you're going to peel the graphic back up, wait till it cools down. All right, I got that much better. Still a tiny, tiny, tiny one right there. But that's, uh, it's so small. They use them small ones kind of go away on their own after a little while. Because, you know, like anything, the, the graphics and the plastic are porous. It does breathe. So it just, it just doesn't go away overnight. It, it, Sometimes you almost have to forget about it. It'll be a couple weeks later. You're looking. I'll be gone. All right. All right. Front number plates. I like to have it on even as everything else. Um, what I like, what I usually do is I'll take a sharpie like this, and I'll mark a line once I get it even. So when I go to stick it on, I just match up the lines. Then I can use brake cleaner or rubbing alcohol a little later and uh, remove that line. I'll show you when I got it done. All right, what I did is I put a line up here. You see? And a, and a dot and a line. I got two dots there, but it's a lower dot I'm paying attention to. And a line there. And when I go to put the graphics on, I'll bend it like this and start at the center and line the lines up and then work towards the edges and it should be even. There you go, start in the center. Let's see. 
appears to be even enough, so let's give it a shot. Try to work air bubbles out. Definitely don't want any air bubbles in the front number plate. You'll see that every time you walk up to the bike. I already see an air bubble there. Let me dress that. All right. And work it in right down here. Anytime you got multiple crinkles, you just kind of even it out as you're setting them down. Just work on the biggest one closest. Start with that and work your way down. The heat gun's always your friend if they get too nasty. Wow, that came out pretty, pretty decent. See it match, it just barely hangs over right there. Barely, barely, barely. But even here too right here right here top corner top corner bottom centers right here right here that's pretty even pretty good all right hit it with wait check for air bubbles first because uh, if i gotta take any out i will i don't see any i'm scared there's gonna be a air bubble that pops up right here i can almost see it already before i even hit it with heat I know what's going to happen. The minute I hit it with heat, it's going to stick its head out. I can just see it. Just really press it in that crease. Now it should be okay to hit it with some heat. And even then, one popped up right here. The thing about heat is it does, like I said, it'll make them pop out. Almost dropped my camera. Just dab a brake cleaner, and that comes right off there. There we go. It's still a little bit up in there. But I'm not worried about it. We got it cleaned up here, though. So, all right. I guess I'll go ahead and knock out the air box decals real quick before I get to the fenders. Same thing with the rear fender. Use the Sharpie right here. Mark the center point. You know, press on the edges right here. Find what the center point is. And same with the rear. Put a little dot right in the middle there. So I know the center point so I can get her centered out.
rear fender is done. That came out great. Front fender. These YZs have the hardest front fender to put graphics on because of all these sharp edges. So let's see how good I can do it. So here's the hard part with this front fender. It's this right here. You get these crinkles. They're really difficult to get rid of. Do the best you can to even it out as you're pressing it down so you get as few crinkles as possible. And then I'm going to heat it with the heat gun and work them over with my finger and try to press them in. Alright, that's pretty much the best I can get it right there. Maybe a mild crinkle right here. And ever so mild one right here. But that's about the best you can ask for on that front fender. I got two more strips put right here. Alright, that's the best I can get it. Like I said, these are tough. A uh, little overlap right there, but it kind of just ended up that way to fit perfectly on it. A little bit even overlap right here too. Otherwise, very little crinkleage up here. That's the, probably the best one I've done, honestly. They, they're pretty tough. Look at my wife's. Look at how big that crinkle is. They just kind of... Oh, it's really tough. That part is tough. Um, unfortunately, it sounds like my heat gun has only got a few more shots left. Listen to it. It's not sounding too good. I hope I at least get done with this job. I can buy another one. All right. Uh, so we've got to do the swing arm. And the decals are going to forks. And I am done. And the fork decals. These can take a lot of heat to get them to stick really well. These did not come with the kit. I had to buy these separately. Alright, got the swing arm decals on. Let me stick all the plastic back on in the seat. Let's see how she looks. Alright, besides the new chain and the shifter lever that's going to arrive today, hopefully. Um, she's a finished product and ready to go. Check her out. Yeah, brand new tires, graphic kit all done, have the springs and the suspension front and rear sprung for how I how I'm gonna how I think I'm gonna like it, although I think I might go one stiffer spring in the rear after uh, after I run her in a little bit. But yeah. There she is. It's a nineteen ninety six throwback. Sweet. Oh, by the way, um, this guy right here, I don't know how to pronounce what he has written there, but he responded. Uh, thank you for responding, by the way, on the pipe. Uh, on He says he likes a pro circuit pipe. Um, I, I That's kind of the one I'm aiming for right now. I mean, especially because I already have the pro circuit silencer, but I definitely, my experience pro circuit, they usually get it right, and they usually make good power. And he mentioned something about it felt like it gained 5 horsepower or whatever on the YZ252 stroke when he put it on there. I would agree it definitely felt kind of like that on my YZ252 stroke when I put the Pro Circuit pipe on. So that might be the pipe that I'm going to start out with once I, you know, once I go down that road of putting a pipe on her. But for now, I'm going to take her out with the stock pipe shorty silencer, stock motor, except for the uh, Wiseco piston and run her that way then I'll do the head mod next so I'll maybe run her this weekend just like this except for the chain and the shifter that's coming in and then I'm gonna do the head mod and then I'm gonna get the pipe so stay tuned guys because um, I'm going to take her to the track and film that and uh, this is the end of day four although this is not the end of the video I have a day five coming tomorrow when I finish up a few things on her and uh, run through just give her a good looking over real quick make sure I didn't forget to tighten down a bolt or something before I take it to the track so uh, here comes day five all right here we are day five it's Friday I get to go test ride her for the first time tomorrow my chain has finally arrived uh, it's got a few things to do to button her up get her ready to go I already have all my fuel mixed up and ready to go I'm running 60% race gas with 40% pump um on uh what is it about 25 or one five ounces of oil per gallon i'm just going to be using one of these primary drive chains it's just a cheap mx race chain is what it says right here it's a cheaper chain um i'm gonna get a better chain for it down the road but i just need something quick for the time being i was already putting the order in rocky mountain and they didn't carry the chain that i had my eyes on at least that i didn't see so give this one a shot it'll get me through a couple weeks i'm sure so uh yeah Actually, let me go ahead and put the spark plug in. I'll start with the spark plug. I'm just going to run the, what the bike calls for for right now, the BR9 EIX. Um, I do have a BR10 EIX on its way. I probably won't really need that now, but after I do the head mod 
that might come in handy on some of these long hard stretch motos you know just try to keep the uh, try to um, try to control some pre-ignition or detonation or whatever uh, the heat, running one cooler heat range is not a bad idea if you run them really really hard like I do that for my YZ 252 stroke I run a nine in that when it calls for an eight I've actually I started running the nine in because I found the bike would sound crisp and clean going onto the track but then after I got it real hot coming off the track it quite didn't run quite as crisp and clean and I chased it around a lot long time for jetting trying to figure out what it was thought it was something in the jetting and one time I tried one uh, heat range colder plug and that completely cured that so I was like ah I'm just getting the plug too hot so I think I'm going to try that with the 125 as well they call for a 9 on it I'm going to eventually jump it up to a 10 but for right now I'm going to pop that in and then get that chain on all right, new chains on there. These aren't too bad of chains for standard chain. They're at least made in Japan. They got these little light holes in the middle that make them a little bit lighter. I mean, it's loaded with grease right now, so it's hard to see. I'm going to guess being made in Japan and they have the little holes in them. These are made by EK. That's what I believe just by looking at it because EK puts the little holes in there and they're made in Japan, but who knows? But that'll get me by for now. Well, I still have a few minutes. I think I'll go ahead and start sprinkling on some of this titanium stuff. I'll start with these sprocket bolts first. The titanium sprocket bolts weigh 2.8 ounces. Just comparing here. And the stock steel stuff weighs 4.8 ounces. So it's about a 2 ounce drop going to titanium. Definitely not a lot. But you know, as they say, if you laugh about the ounces, you'll be crying about the pounds. I guess the whole idea is just pay attention to what you add to your bike. I mean, this you don't have to put titanium bolts in your bike, but when you start adding stuff, you definitely want to be careful of what you add and where you add it. You don't want to add unnecessary weight to the bike because it does all add up after a while. All right, sprinkle on a little bit of titanium stuff. Got two little titanium bolts right here, the sprocket bolts, uh, these bolts right here. Uh, shoot, just little stuff here and there, some right here. Again, it doesn't do much, but it makes you feel a little better. All the pipe mount bolts, and I got some more stuff to put on it. Uh, I just don't have time now. I got to get moving. Got to get this thing loaded up. So let me go ahead and check the tire pressure on them and get them loaded up in the truck. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add to it. I also have the titanium bolts down here for the calipers and the, the fork, the bottom of the forks here. Load them up. Oops, almost forgot to add my quick bleeders. I'll go put that on while the bike is in the back of the truck real quick. There it, is, there it is, guys, all loaded up for tomorrow. I appreciate all you guys that sat here and watched this build. It's been a long five days. If you sat through all this, I really appreciate it. And um, stay tuned for tomorrow. I'm going to get some footage out on the track and try to cover the first ride, some GoPro footage and uh, anything I run into on tuning or trying to get the dialed in. So see you tomorrow.